My name is Amy zuber Meehan, and I have the privilege of serving as the high school principal. Next year, when our Deep Learning Signature course comes online, it's gonna feel fundamentally different for our students. It's gonna feel unlike any classroom experience that they may have had thus far in their educational journey. And that's why it was so important to us to give the Deep Learning Signature course team a full year to develop the course and to really grapple with the kind of rigor that is necessary to help kids unlock their potential and to shine in ways that are very different from what they may have ever experienced before. My name's Nadine Dickinson. I'm the High School Curriculum Coordinator, and this is the Deep Learning Signature Team. My name is Makah Black Elk. My name is Becky Naughton. My name is Matt Kuykendall. Can you say a little about how the course is structured? Yeah. This course, I would say, is structured on questions. Questions that get asked to the students every day. Questions that are sort of overarching questions that we sort of keep uh, our minds towards throughout a given thread or unit of exploration um, and questions that they come up with themselves, whether they're research questions, um, whether they're philosophical questions, epistemological questions, moral questions, ethical questions. I would say that if I had to come up with one word, this course is built around questions and that's what makes it really powerfully unique from other classes which are generally structured around content. I would say if there's one word for me that this course is about is that it's about choice, right? And, and having the students be able to design that pathway of um, how they're answering questions and, and what they want to ask of the questions too. I think if there's another word that really captures well the structure of this course and, and the impetus behind it, I would say it's intentionality or intention, right? That our students are engaging in something that's meaningful to them it's choice through something that they feel personally, you know, uh, passionate about, related to, and that they want to explore. There's an intention behind it. So our students will be working towards a culminating experience um, slash project at the end of this course, at the end of the first year. Can you talk a little bit about what that might look like? I think the beauty of the end of the year project is it's going to look different for everybody. We've sat around and tried to imagine lots of different kinds of students, but you know the best part is going to be when we have a group of kids that have come up with something that we didn't think of. Students can go in a million different directions and that again is the beauty of the course that allows them to follow their own path and their own passion. It's really rare that someone has a moment to pause and be asked the question, what is meaningful to you? And that then expands to how has my community and society around me shaped that? Uh, what are the things that our community grapples with, that the world grapples with? How do these things start to twist and push against each other? And then it goes bigger even further into then how do I impact that, right? Like what are the changes that are made? What are the things that we do uh, as human beings to inform and shape each other and create thriving societies. Can you say something about how rigor is built into this course? I would say that this course is by no means easy. It will be incredibly challenging for our students because they will be pushed in ways that they've never been pushed before in terms of them having to take ownership of their own learning, of them having to answer ambiguous questions, for them having to come up with questions, um, conduct research, create a plan, execute a plan that has meaning and impact in the world um, and on themselves. I think people traditionally think of something as rigorous as it's hard to do and very few people can do it. That's certainly one type of rigor, but we're really focused on the rigor, I think, being something inherent in students facing new situations, facing questions that don't have right or wrong answers, being able to come up with new ideas and implement those ideas. There's so much difficulty in just the exploration of really difficult topics and questions that don't have easy answers. We, we know that colleges are looking for students who know who they are and not just becoming another number by AP score and SAT score. We know that this course is going to allow students to show who they are in that way that these other courses can't allow them to do. 
I think it just makes me think of like when we design the course, we we intentionally use this term threads, right? Because we're thinking about not so much like learning starts and then learning stops where there's a test right at the end and then boom, learning's done and you did what you had to do. This is meant to be a weaving of experiences that will be a part of a whole journey of learning that doesn't end. If you think about 18 months from now, we're coming to the end of the first year of this program. What will that look like to you if it's been successful? How will that look and feel? For me, I'm very focused on uh, students walking away from the class, having a, a deeper sense of meaning and having a, a direction for themselves. Um, and I think that's, that's what I would hope the course results in. And success isn't necessarily doing the shiniest thing or the thing that finishes first or people judge to be the best. Success is also internal and success is also process oriented um, because there's always going to be new mountains to climb, other people that might be like quote unquote better than you. And so if you're always measuring your success against an external metric, you're never going to reach that pinnacle. But if your success is internal and process oriented, then you can reach personal maximization. I would say too, like I really think about success for those kids like that as well, but also I really like thinking about the kid who realizes all the things they aren't interested in, mm. right? Like what a great chance to be like, oh, I, I dug into this and that actually wasn't something I cared about. Again, going back to the idea of failure and success, we don't oftentimes think about finding what we don't like as a success, but this is gonna be a great chance for a kid to realize I don't actually like these things that I always thought I did, so I'm not gonna go and study that and, and not waste a couple of years of university or working in a field that doesn't actually light them up. I know for all of us, it'll be successful if the kids have fun. School's supposed to be fun. Learning is supposed to be fun. Like, if we can awaken that joy of learning, the joy of learning about the world, learning about yourself, learning about others. So if this course will absolutely be successful if the kids have fun, and that intrinsic passion for learning is awoken in, in as many of them as possible. Over the past two years, our team visited with college admissions teams on both the East and the West Coast. The feedback we received from our college admissions partners were absolutely enthusiastic, overly enthusiastic. Berkeley, for instance, told us that they would take a deep learning signature course program any day over another AP. Harvard told us, this looks beautiful. How do we get more schools to invest in this kind of work? Brown said, this is so good for kids. And every other school we spoke with really spoke to how this program is going to help our students when they do go to college, navigate their own college journey with so much more preparation. 